Hi, my name is Elika and today we're going to be talking about the conventions of letters and podcasts. The conventions of these two formats of text are mostly just to do with structure. So that's what you can be expecting today. And the, the, the purpose of this video is just to give you a general feel and idea for what letters and podcasts kind of what they generally look and sound like so that if you have to analyze one or write one yourself, you at least have a feel for where to start. All right, so first up, we're gonna be talking about letters. A letter will generally start with the specific details like the send address, date and the return address. So that's nothing to do with the actual content, but just something that is kind of practically needed if you're writing a letter. Then of course you start with the greeting, that is the common thing to do. Using dear blank is generally appropriate, whether that's a formal or informal letter that you're writing. And then depending on the person that you're writing to, you will write miss, mister or missus. You could use their job title, so for example, dear director and then their name, or you could just write their full name. It really depends on um, who you're writing to and the context of the letter that you are writing. So let's say you're writing a work letter to a boss of some kind, whether that's in a different company or your own company, then maybe using the job title would be more applicable. If you're just writing it to someone who you respect, uh, then it's fine to just say Mr. or Mrs. Miss, anything like that, and then their surname. Again, it just depends on who you're writing to and the context of the letter that you're writing. Then you get to the actual body of the letter. So that includes the intro, the main body, and the closing. So in the intro, that's the first uh, paragraph, a few sentences. You can introduce yourself and you can give a brief overview of the reason for your writing. So you can kind of give an outline of the structure of the main points that you're making in your letter. Then in the main body, you're going to start another paragraph and this should expand on your intro and give details of the main point of the letter. And if there are many points, you should separate each point by a line and start a new paragraph for each individual point that you're making. Then after you've said all that you wanted to say, you can start writing your closing. So again, leave a space and then for the last paragraph, uh, you should rephrase your intro. So generally it would be what your intro said, but now with the main body, the information that you gave in mind. And given the information that you have written in the main body of the letter, if you now need someone to act on that information, you can insert a call to action if that's needed. So then in the outro, that's generally where you say like, sincerely, Lily Canal or whatever your name may be. For a formal letter, you can say sincerely or yours truly. And if it's informal, you can say cordially or best regard. Then you skip four lines and you can write your full name, skip another line and you can write your job title or company name if it's a work-related letter or necessary at all. And then right at the bottom, you could add your signature if necessary. So if you're adding documents, whether that's adding attachments to an email or maybe adding documents into an envelope with the letter included, then you can write enclosures right at the end of your letter. So basically just list the documents that you're including in the letter. All right, let's now move on to podcasts. Again, I'm just going to be focusing on the structure of a podcast. So generally, podcasts may have a sponsor message and the general practice would be to say, this podcast is sponsored by whoever is sponsoring that specific podcast. Then you jump straight into your introduction. So in the introduction, you will introduce yourself and all the other speakers that are on the podcast um, for that episode. You can maybe just mention a bit what you'll be talking about very briefly. Then you can jump straight into the intro jingle. So if you have like a tune or um, a specific song that you play before this podcast starts, you can enter that there. And then after all that, you can start into the actual podcast. So that would include a longer introduction that you can then segue into your first topic. So generally podcasts, scripts that for podcasts are generally just topics that you write down and then you kind of go off of the top of your head and just have a conversation with the people in the room about the topics. If you're writing a script for a podcast, you want to give yourself room to breathe. So you don't want to write down word for word necessarily, unless it's maybe a sponsored message that you have to say in the middle of your podcast and the company or brand that's sponsoring you wants you to deliver a specific handcrafted message. But when you're just talking with other people, you want the conversation to feel natural and people will pick up on that. The listeners will pick up on that. So generally it is better to rather have a more natural feel um, and go off of bullet point lists rather than a full script. That being said, there is still a structure for each topic that you'll cover. So in a topic, there will be a main point, a supporting point with supporting data and a supporting quote. So this is just like writing an essay. You will make your main point 
then you will support that point. But you can't support the point without data, right? So then you add the data that backs up your argument. Then to just give yourself some authority, you can then enter a quote uh, of someone who has authority in the topic or the point that you are trying to bring across to the viewer or the listener in this case. You can then maybe throw in a real life example or an anecdote and then you conclude that topic. After that, you will then try to segue as smoothly as possible into the next topic and the cycle continues. At the end of the podcast, after you've spoken about however many topics you had planned to speak about, you can kind of exit with some closing remarks and maybe you have an outro jingle that you play, another song. And that is the end of the podcast. Some tips for podcasts is you want to paint pictures with your words because listeners generally can only hear what you're saying and not see you. And, and your body language is very important when it comes to actually communicating effectively and really accurately you want to really be colorful with your words and try to be as yeah just as accurate as possible with your wording so that people don't get the wrong idea and misinterpret what you're saying also if you're describing something it's like reading a book you want to be able to see the image in your mind because you can't actually see the person who's speaking to you so again paint pictures with your words you also want to keep it concise uh, you can't just ramble on and on forever um, and so whenever you maybe deviate from a topic, it's a good idea to just remember to try to bring it back to the topic as quickly as possible. Tangents aren't the end of the world, they can be very interesting, but if you, you know, tangent off too much, it can just feel like a big mess and very hard to follow. And then again, you do want to give yourself flexibility. You don't want to box yourself in and sound like a robot at the end of the day. You want people to be able to connect and relate to what you're saying. So give yourself flexibility to just sound like a normal person. If you mess up, but that's fine. I have to re-record some of the sentences that I say for these videos like three times um, and that's just how people speak generally. So don't be too perfectionistic about it and again rather stick to bullet point lists rather than full scripts. But that's the end of this video. If you liked it give it a like. If you really liked it subscribe. I would really appreciate it. This is the type of content that I make on this channel. So if you like this video, chances are you will enjoy the other videos that I make on this channel. Also, if you find yourself pausing this video constantly to try and, you know, take in the information, I've got some great news for you. There is also a blog in tandem with every single video that I create. So if you go to the first link in the description, that'll take you over to the blog for Cambridge at Home, where you can find the kind of script version of this video. But that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck on your studying journey. <laughs>